I'm Scott L. Miller, it's the 28th of September, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. I get asked on a regular basis, maybe every couple weeks, how can I find a job working online from Nicaragua? Well, we're gonna talk about that right after the bump. One of my reasons for wanting to do the video today is because I get asked this on a very regular basis. Every few weeks it comes up that someone wants to know something having to do with how do you work remotely from Nicaragua, how do you find that job, how do they get work so you can work here, and so forth. So I want to have a video that I can point people to so that I have a consistent answer rather than having to write something up every time because the answer is essentially always the same and people ask all the time and it's a little bit difficult to find this information. So I understand why I may need to point you to this because with thousands of videos, it's very difficult to know which of mine to go look at. So we're gonna dive right in and talk about this. So from the beginning, this is actually a really weird question to be asking me. Keep in mind, I am a YouTuber who lives in Nicaragua. So of all the people in the world to ask me how you are going to find a job, is I'm a weird resource to come to for that. There's nothing about me that would make me a person to ask. Um, I also get asked very often, for example, for people coming from Africa, if I can sponsor a visa for them. I'm an American tourist in Nicaragua. There is absolutely no chance whatsoever in any world ever that I could sponsor for them a Nicaraguan visa. I'm not eligible to sponsor, nor do I know them, so I'm not eligible from any potential direction. So it's all pretty weird. So when you're talking about jobs, I don't know what it is you're doing. One of the things that seems to be standard is that no one ever tells me what career or experience they have. So I don't even know what types of jobs you might be eligible to take. That's the first thing, I don't know what you do, so I don't know what kind of job to recommend to you. The second thing is I don't know where you are, so depending on where you come from, that changes what jobs you can take. If you are German from Germany, or Canadian from Canada, or American from the United States, where you're coming from generally determines which jobs you're eligible for. Germans can work German jobs, Canadians, Canadian jobs, Americans, American jobs, and so forth. That's what you generally want, and maybe this is the information you need. If you're an American and you want to work online, you're going to make your maximum money by no small margin by working in the United States, simply a work from home job in the United States. That's it, because then they're paying you as an American, just an American without a specifically higher cost than average or than minimum jurisdiction. But they're paying for you to be an American, whatever that means but they're paying so that, and, and this is a tax status, right? This means that you're filing a W-2 and filing your taxes in the United States and acting as an American, as a normal, everyday employed American. That's what that means. And that's why you potentially make so much more money than doing something else. The moment you're taking a online job and it has no jurisdiction, you have to work as any generic international worker. You're giving up your Americanness, your Canadianness, your Germanness, whatever, whatever jurisdiction would naturally give you a higher than normal or higher than global income rate, you're throwing that away or losing it and accepting global minimums. So once you're doing those jobs, instead of getting paid to be an American or paid to be a Canadian, now you're competing against Nicaraguans and Filipinos and Indians and, and people in China and, and everywhere in the world for those positions. And yes, you may have an advantage because of a knowledge of the American market, a mastery of English, a uh, access to a good computer or good education, maybe. But you're completely up against millions or billions of people around the world who have significant access to resources, education, mastery of English, and so forth. So while those jobs exist, on if we're answering those, you're answering, well, for every single Nicaraguan and every single Guatemalan and every single Honduran and every single Salvadorian, if they want to work online and find ways to pay their bills, this is how they do it. 
you, presumably, by asking me this question, the people who are looking to relocate here, you already have the biggest, most likely, the biggest job advantage in the world, which is coming from a high cost market where you can work locally and you're just taking a work from home position. Yes, that will probably pay a little bit less. Yes, that's gonna limit you a lot, but that's the first thing. So the first piece of this entire puzzle is where can you work? So we're gonna do the rest of this, assuming you're American, but basically everything applies to any high cost location, right? This could be Israel, this could be uh, France, this could be Spain, this could be Brazil. Okay, so you have this starting point that you're making all this additional money because of where you are legally allowed to be an employee. And then, well, let's ask this question in a very generic sense. You live somewhere in the United States or you're from the United States and you want to get a job. Imagine asking a random person, how do I find a job? What kind of question is that, right? Who could answer that? So if someone who knows you really well can be like, oh, I know you love fish. You should go into aquaculture, you know, raising fish and doing that would be good for you. I don't know what you're into and I don't know what your education is. And I don't know what your, I don't even know what your linguistic skills are, right? If you're posting on the channel, for all I know, you're using a translator and you can't be on the phone or maybe you're blind and you're using an audio uh, speech to text to be able to, I don't know what you're able to do and I don't know what you like to do. And I don't know in most fields what the job options are. So I can't, even if I do know your nationality and your right to work locations, I don't know anything about you, right? If I had a real resume and you had experience in a field that I had experience in, maybe I could give you some minimal advice. But the question that's really being asked is just in a completely generic sense with no background information, how do I find work? This is something you have to struggle with as an adult. Every adult has to go out and find a job, right? More or less. And how you find work, what work is good for you. These are things that define the human experience for most people, especially in capitalist markets, right? You start making these decisions as a teenager, what things are you going to study? Which things are you going to get experience in? Which things are you going to do? And now, presumably, you're an adult and you're looking for work. And I'm, I'm saying this to thousands of potential people who are going to watch this video and we're going to ask this question or have asked that I pointed you to this. So I don't have specifics because I'm pointing everyone to this. So I want to make this general. But you have things that interest you. You have things you're good at. You have a set of skills that no one for sure knows except you. So you need to take those skills and you need to take the world of potential jobs and try matching them together and, and figure out how those skills can be done for those jobs online. Not every job can be done online. And I think everyone knows that like no one's, no one's making that claim, right? None of you are making that claim. I'm not saying you are. It's, it's that you need to think through, for example, if you're an accountant, how can I do accounting online? Well, the reality is most accountants are already online. That's the normal way to be an accountant. So you're good. That's not going to be a problem. If you're a nurse, you have a different challenge, right? Can you be a nurse online? Absolutely you can. And that came up on the channel that someone is a nurse and was asking about job opportunities. And, and, and someone said, you know, I see a lot of postings for online nurses. Well, that's fantastic. So maybe that's an option. Keep in mind, jurisdictions are a big deal. You may have to have state or provincial certification for certain things. You have to think those things through. Tr your job journey living in Nicaragua is not different than your job journey not living in Nicaragua. All right, so again, with the assumed Americanness as an example, let's say you want to work, and we'll use one of the simplest examples because everyone does it online. You want to be a software developer. Right, but you're an American, you're, you can take a W-2 tax form from the United States. So because of this, because you're able to do that, you can go apply for all those jobs that say must be an American, which includes some like, like ones that require clearance or ones that are for the military or whatever. You have a lot of potential options, including ones that have uh, grant money and things like that, right? Some of those things are very much about uh, uh, spurring the American economy, so you're not allowed to use outside resources for that. So you're, you're in this great boat where you have access to these jobs. And so you can look at all those jobs that allow you to work from home 
And whether you're living in rural Iowa or downtown Manhattan or Nicaragua is of no consequence. As long as you can get a work from home job and you are all set to work from home, where your home is, is a very gray area, right? Because you're an American citizen, so home is in America. Well, what if I come to Nicaragua? What if you do? People travel, that's just where you're traveling. It has nothing to do with your job. It has nothing to do with work from home. It has nothing to do with anything. Unless you've signed some agreement, I will never do work while traveling. Why will never do work while on tour anywhere? And there are some jobs that make you say that, but they are very rare. Otherwise, never bring it up. The fact that you're going to be in Nicaragua, and more importantly, the fact that you might be in Nicaragua for some time, whether it's definitely going to be and forever or might be for a week, none of that is something you necessarily know. You don't know how long you're gonna stay here. You may think you're gonna stay forever, great. You may be uh, completely confident that this is where you're coming, but what if your flight gets canceled? What if some tragedy befalls you? Maybe you won't. What's important is it's never a definite. It's always a maybe, and you're always a tourist. Even if you get residency in Nicaragua, you're still a tourist as far as the United States is concerned, right? The fact that you've not come back to the United States for a long time is not anybody's business unless they make you sign something saying that you will disclose that. And I've never seen anyone do that. So this is really important that you remember you still exist as an American. That is where you're filing your taxes. That is where you're doing all your stuff. The fact that you're in Nicaragua is that you are a long-term, potentially indefinite tourist. And you say, but, but Scott, I get residency in Nicaragua at some point. Yes, that is Nicaraguan residency. That is not reported to the United States. It is not the United States business. Residency is an internal thing, it's not an external thing. You're thinking of citizenship. If you got Nicaraguan citizenship, which you will never get and should never be mentioned, you don't want it, no one wants it, it should never cross anyone's mind. If you were to get that, that gets reported. Citizenship is external. That's where a country claims you, that they own you, that you are a citizen of that country and you act on behalf of that country. That's not what you're doing. If you come here and you stay a long time, you could easily become a resident that is simply Nicaragua changing your visa status for getting to stay here. To the United States, you are still a person who has gone on vacation. That never changes until you get citizenship somewhere. I'm sorry, until you get residency somewhere. So it's really, really, really important. And, and I think it's where people get taken off the rails. You start thinking that somehow by being in Nicaragua or intending to be in Nicaragua, there is some subset of jobs that either occur because you're in Nicaragua. So like you come to Nicaragua and they have a how to work from here website and every job in the world that lets you work from Nicaragua or wants you to work from Nicaragua is listed there. That's not how jobs work, right? Everybody does the same thing to find jobs, which is mostly flail, talk to your references, right? Call around your reference pool and see who's got work for you. Create your own jobs. That works way better than people realize. Find online, Indeed, Monster, Career Builder, whatever system now exists. I don't know, there was Dice and a lot of people use LinkedIn. Most of those are just full of crap and they're not real job sites. So who knows how you actually find jobs. Sorry, I haven't been in the job search position for a really long time, so I'm not up to date. All I know is everyone I know who uses those things is consistently hitting the it's all fake jobs barrier. There's no responses and the job requirements make no sense. It's not real, right? But somewhere there's real jobs in there. Everyone has somebody they know who's gotten a job from there, but everybody knows a hundred people who haven't. So who knows? And then there's directly applying to jobs. Send in your resume, call people, find out if companies are hiring. All these things you have to, the exact same way you look for a job. The, the fact that we're talking from Nicaragua has literally nothing to do with the situation. So the question is not, how do I get a job from Nicaragua? How do I get a job that lets me go to Nicaragua? The question is, how do I find a job in whatever country I'm from that lets me work from home? The only part there that has any, any speci specification is that lets me work from home. And that's, that's the challenge, but especially now the job market has, has gone all over the place. Most jobs know that there are ways to work from home, but not every job. Are you a veterinarian? You're probably not gonna be able to find work from home. Sorry, that's really rare. And those that get that generally do it from abroad. And when you say do it from abroad, they mean people who don't have that W-2 benefit, so they're much cheaper. 
But if you're an accountant, there's no reason you can't just pack up and go. Nobody cares where you're physically located. So it's all about understanding what job you're going to do. What is your tasks going to be? Can those things be done remotely? If not, stop trying to find a job in that area. Either you can't move and have a job or you need to think about a different job. Those are the options, right? Now, what I think people are gonna say is, but Scott, people go out and teach English online. Okay, they don't hire Americans for that. They hire random people for that. They hire people from somewhere else for really small amounts of money. So you really have to sit down and define what job you're looking for, what range of jobs you could potentially do and focus on finding those, the same as you would regardless of the fact that it's Nicaragua. Asking other people, how do I find a job? Yes, if you know people who are successfully getting jobs, you've, you've got some benefits, right? They may be able to tell you, well, Indeed works, but you have to do this. Or, you know, I know someone who's got a job opening, you should talk to them. A lot of the best jobs are found by word of mouth. So get out there and start talking to people, right? Make connections. This is a tough one, right? Because the way that the job markets are working in most places, it is legitimately quite hard to find jobs. And employers are really struggling with how to find employees. The ability to match from people who are seeking to hire and those who want to be hired is actually becoming a problem. There was a time where it was actually much easier somehow it's become incredibly difficult. And maybe what you need to have is a headhunter or a recruiter of some sort who is able to go out and, and connect you with the right types of jobs. You can tell them, here's the range of skills I have, what kind of jobs you have, and they put you into a list and they try to figure out something that matches with you. That may be an option. Those types of jobs, the teaching English online, all these things that have no need whatsoever, absolutely zero benefit to have an actual American are basically never going to have an American. Why would someone pay thousands of dollars a month when you can easily hire someone just as good and very likely better who has a better appreciation of more languages, more availability, better flexibility, already working from a low cost location, may have all of their ducks in a row to be able to do that and get them for hundreds of dollars a month why would you ever opt to pay thousands for someone who at best is just as good, right? That doesn't make any sense. You'd have to be insane to make that choice as a business. And you'd have to violate fiduciary responsibility if you're a corporation, right? That's not even specifically legal in a lot of cases. Like as an American employer, I could not hire those resources from the United States if I had investors. I would be stealing from the investors. Right, not to take home the money, but I would be taking it and feeding it into, you know, Americans just to feed it to Americans. I couldn't, in good, uh, good conscience, you know, my ethics do not allow. Sure, I could get, I would not get caught. Right, that's always the answer in business. Right, everybody says, "Why well, won't get caught?" And you're right, you probably won't get caught, but you will be breaking the law just because they don't enforce it doesn't make it not the law. And you will be being unethical because you're being racist, right? You're sending a job somewhere based on their race, not based on their qualifications. And someone who's, you're paying 10 times, maybe not, maybe five times, but five to 10 times as much based on their race or based on their nationality, that borders on completely maniacal, right? So you're not gonna find businesses doing that. It's crazy. And they, the amount of money they'd have to be stealing and for what? It's not like you get to put it in your pocket. It makes it harder to do your job in other roles. Like the people, it just doesn't make sense. So assuming that those things are gonna happen isn't a good way to go about it. Assume it's not. So anytime you're doing those kinds of jobs, especially teaching English, because that has become the most generic, everybody who can speak English well, goes someplace cheap and takes a job that does not require them to have any skills except the ability to talk, and teaches that. So it's become a lowest common denominator job everywhere. That makes it really, really, really tough. Yes, a lot of people need it, but nobody can prove. If you are hiring those people, you don't know who speaks it really well or who speaks it just a little bit well, and you want to spend as little money as possible because it's the only thing you can measure. It's just one of those roles that has become very, very, very difficult. Assume that if you want to do that, maybe, maybe you can put food on the table if you're, but you have to live like a local, wherever it is you're gonna be. And most high cost markets will be out of your reach, right? So you're stuck in the lowest cost markets, which is fine, maybe that's where you wanna be, but you're giving up that flexibility because you're taking on a job that only makes sense in super low cost markets. Because essentially, if the only skill you have is teaching English online, an unlimited number of people will, if they can get that work, 
migrate from high cost places like the United States where they can't survive at all and move to places like Nicaragua where at least they can live off of that money. So in many ways, those jobs show just how much more survivable life is in Nicaragua at the same level of skills, at the same level of education, at the same, you can make it here. It'll still be tough, but you can definitely make it. And if you're in the United States, you would not have shelter, you would not be able to feed yourself, and it's it, there's just no way. And so that's that's an important aspect to look at, but those are not jobs you wanna go out seeking because that is not going to give you the benefits. You need to figure out what it is that you have special that you're able to do, and that's going to give you the maximum advantage. But I can't answer that stuff for you. I don't know what it is about moving to a place like Nicaragua that causes so many odd views of what life will be like or how you should interact with the new place that you're moving. In this particular context, we're talking about how do I find a job and how odd it is that people would ask someone who's not working in Nicaragua and doesn't have to look for a job. And even if I did, I would have just that one specific job, right? I can go out. I have offers for work, work from home, right? I'm a financial consultant. I can go work on Wall Street and do that work remotely. If that's something I needed to do, I can pick up the phone and call a number of companies that I've worked with in the past. I have direct connections. Say, look, I'm available. Obviously, I'll be a lot cheaper than I was when I was up there. I may, you know, we will work something out. I'd like to go back to work. And they'd be like, great, we know you. We have this experience. Wonderful. So, okay, I can tell you how I would get a job. Is that useful to you? No, in no way whatsoever, because you don't have my experience, you don't have my contacts, you don't have my job skills. You may have much better ones, you may have very different ones, you may have kind of similar ones, but they're not exactly the same. So my experience, anybody's experience, is not useful for you. You have to figure those things out on your, on your own, just as like you already do. This has nothing to do with you moving to Nicaragua. But something about moving to Nicaragua makes people very often think that there's some magic job button that there's all these jobs just for Americans who move to Nicaragua, or this need to buy a house from abroad, or this need to pack everything up and just go without visiting first, or this, this absolute drive to open a business, not to make money and not because it makes sense, but that you just gotta open a business. And uh, quite a few people have a feeling that they need to give up on their right to work in the US or Canada or wherever, and they need to work locally in Nicaragua where it's illegal and makes really no money. These are weird reactions that when I talk to people who are looking to become expats in other countries, Costa Rica, Germany, Italy, whatever, I never get these kinds of reactions. Yet all of the factors are the same. They need work. They can't work locally under most circumstances. Once in a while they can, but generally they're not able to work locally. When I lived in Italy, for example, I had to do the exact same setup to work in the United States. I was just working from Italy at the time. And when I flew back to the United States, I was working from the United States. Uh, when I was in Italy, I needed to, you know, find a rental apartment. I didn't go out and start a business just because, and start a business before I even got there. I didn't buy a home. I rented and I worked remotely and evaluated the place and didn't say, oh, I should start a business. I said, what a beautiful place to live. And then moved on somewhere. These are there's something about Nicaragua that makes people have these completely different reactions on a scale that I don't see anywhere else. And I've, as someone who's lived a lot of places, I talk to people relocating all the time. Consistently, the view of life in Nicaragua is so different than normal. And I can't figure out what drives these ideas. And really think about what's really happening, right? You really need to have a, a, a good objective thought on Nicaragua is a normal place and don't treat the way that you're going to interact with it differently than other places. It's a normal country with normal work and normal residency and normal everything. Yes, there's some things about Nicaragua that are special. It's location in the world, it's cost of living, and there's all these little things that make it a really wonderful choice but it doesn't violate all the rules of normal behavior, the way that you would invest or be a business person or interact with, with other people or relocate or any, or get a job. 
all of those things remain completely normal. And for some reason, I know everyone thinks there's going to be special cases with Nicaragua. That's not how it is. It's, it's going to be the general case. It's going to be the normal case. It's going to be what you're used to other places. If you were moving to Canada or moving to Germany, moving to Guatemala or Mexico, basically all the things are going to be the same with tiny little differences, not major differences. Uh, and, and stepping back and saying, is the way I'm behaving the way I would behave if I was moving to a different state or a different country? Or is it unique to Nicaragua? And if so, why? What is making you feel that way? And, and I really don't know. And I'd be really interested if you're having those feelings. Get down in the comments. Let's let's hear because I really don't understand what's driving people to see Nicaragua as being so unique. Sorry, of course the camera died, overheated, and I had to switch uh, to recording in here. But thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That means so much to me. And thank you to everyone who supports the channel. And uh, as always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. And I will see all of you tomorrow.